Good morning, everybody. Today, our act of worship is about Ash Wednesday and Lent. And it's one of those really rare occasions where we encompass every one of our school values from determination, compassion, resilience, perseverance, all of those, even self-control, honesty, friendship. And it's an amazing opportunity for us. So let's begin our act of worship by making the sign of the cross in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the book of Romans, we have this quote which says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. This is showing us that sin doesn't define us as a person. It's about the other actions that we do that really does define us. So let's have a think about some of the things that we find really, really hard to stop doing. Maybe eating too many sweets, maybe eating a little bit too much food, being a bit wasteful. Certainly some of us are good at hurting others with our words and our actions. <gasps> swearing. Some of us do quite a lot of swearing. Procrastinating. And that means we say things. We don't really get around to it. We're good at saying it, but not doing it. And what about the bottom one? How often do we ignore those people that really need our help? Because there are a lot of people in the world, even just little things that need our help. So, Ash Wednesday is the start of Lent. And it's when we usually get the ashes on our head made into a cross. And it's a symbol of death and sorrow for all the sins that we've committed. And it lasts for 40 days. And when it ends and we celebrate Easter, that's a big celebration. And you know you will get chocolate Easter eggs and all those fun things. But Lent is that time sort of leading up. And it's a time for us to reflect and think about all the things we've done wrong. And it could be an opportunity to fast. Maybe not have as much as what we normally do. Let's just think about Ash Wednesday itself, because it's a really important symbol for us. Death, as we know, unfortunately, comes to everyone. Young, old, it, it, it happens. And whilst we should be sad about all of the sins and things that we've committed, we have to think about our sins and see how we can reflect to change ourselves for the better. Now, God made the first human being, Adam, by breathing life into him. And without God, we are nothing more than dust and ashes. So this comes straight from the Bible. Now, the cross shape that the ashes make is also an important symbol for us. It's a reminder of the cross that is made on our foreheads when we are baptised. And it's a reminder of the sacrifice that Jesus has made for every single one of us. He died on that cross for our sins to be forgiven. So we're focusing on our sins, starting with Ash Wednesday, moving into Lent. So this is a passage from Matthew's Gospel. And it says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter said, You are the Son of God. Tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, That does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The devil then took him to the holy city, and he had him stand on the highest part of the temple. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down, he said. Jesus said, do not put your Lord to the test. So the devil then took him to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. All of this I will give to you if you just bow down and worship me. Jesus answered, away from me, Satan. It is written. Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil left and the angels came to attend him. So three times in that story, Jesus was tempted. He didn't give in. How often are we tempted? How often can we override those temptations? On your screens now, you can see a picture of some inmates from Soledad um, State Prison in California. Now, this is a prison that a number of years ago started a book club with a local school. And the school children used to go bust into the prison and they would sit with some of the inmates and they would all read the same book and then they would discuss the book. And one of the books that they read was Miracle on the River Kwai. And it had an impact on not only the students, but on the inmates. And in this book, it's about um, prisoners of war that are taken prisoner. 
And what they do is they do something called mucking for each other. So they try and do things that helps somebody else. So even though they're all suffering in this prison camp and they're being starved and they're being punished, they try their best to do something to help one of the others that's in the camp with them. And the prisoners come together and they think, well, you know, we could do something like that. And what they come up with, or what one of the inmates comes up with, a guy called Jason Bryant, he decides that they would like to muck for one of the students at the school and pay for his education. And all of them over three years, 800 inmates end up joining in. So it, the, 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 the information just travels around the prison. And each prisoner, oh, I'll, I'll give a bit, yeah, I'll support. So some of them give savings and some of them just give what they earn, which amounts to about 10 pence a day in prison. And they save up and over three years, they get $32,000. And there's a student in the school called Cy Green. And Cy's dad had had a massive heart attack and his mum was blind. And they decided they would pay for his education because his parents could no longer work. And they do. And then Cy goes on to art college and he's actually becoming quite well known in America for everything he's done. But he wouldn't have had those opportunities without those inmates. So they wanted to give somebody the start in life that they never had. They didn't want this student to go down the route of crime. So they helped to stop it. Now, Jason Bryant, who actually started that idea off, actually, when he left prison, became the director of restorative work. So what he now does is when people come out of prison, he gives them an opportunity to restart. It's a little bit like what Ash Wednesday and Lent does for us. It gives us a chance to press reset. Let's have a think about the things we're getting wrong. Let's try and make them right. Now, here in front of me, I have a tiny little acorn. A little tiny thing. And acorns grow into enormous oak trees, like you can see on the picture. I don't know if you can see the little um, bench at the bottom, but that's what they become, these enormous trees. And I was reading a story by a guy called Max Licardo, and he's somebody that I read a lot. And he's a pastor in America, so he's a Christian pastor, and he interprets the scriptures for modern day life. And he tells a story for children about this little acorn who's hanging on the tree for dear life and he's talking to his mum the tree and he's saying, I'm not ready, mum, I'm not ready to go. He's frightened. And mum says, I'm sorry, son, but you have to go at some point and a massive storm breaks out and unfortunately he falls off the tree. And he lands actually in the farmer's truck and the farmer drives away and in the back of his truck he's got a little orange tree he's just about to plant and the acorn ends up in the ground near to the orange tree. And eventually he sprouts and he starts to grow and he talks to the orange tree. A little bit strange to think of trees talking to each other, but hold that thought. And he sees the orange tree with these beautiful oranges on it. And he thinks, oh, that's what I want to be. And he tries and he tries and he tries. Happen. He can't grow oranges because he's not an orange tree. And he gets a little bit upset, but he gets over it. The orange tree talks to him now and says, no, that's not your plan. You need to find your plan. So he looks around the garden and he can see, oh, flowers, beautiful, beautiful coloured flowers. I want to be a flower. And he tries and he tries and he tries. Happen. And the flowers say to him, but that's not your plan. You have to wait to find your plan. And over the years, he grows and he grows. The farmer comes out and he builds a swing on one of the strongest branches he's got. And the farmer's children go and play on the swing. And for years, every summertime, they're there and the tree is so happy that they're there and he thinks, I found some of my purpose. And he loves the noise of the children laughing and the birds nesting and the insects living and all the creatures that he provides support for. And he thinks, that is my purpose. So he tried all the other things, but they weren't right for him. And eventually he does find the one thing that is fit for him. And that's one thing that we need to remember. We can't be anybody else because everybody else has already taken. We just need to work to find our path. And by learning from the things we do wrong, we start to do. Do things right. And this is what Lent. Blessed Oscar Mero is one of the most inspiring people that we can learn about. But one of the things he says, and it's one of my favourite quotes, is aspire not to have more, but to be more. And Lent gives us that opportunity where we maybe give things up. Maybe we give up a bit of chocolate for a while, or we give up swearing, or we give up being mean to people. 
it would make us a person. Mother Teresa's quote on the other side, God does not command that we do great things, only little things with great love. So the things that we can do over Lent, the little things, but they mean a lot to other people. Now, somebody else who I find quite inspiring is uh, Marie Curie. She did so much for science. She was a phenomenal lady. Now, her quote says, you cannot hope to build a better world without improving the individuals. To that end, each of us must work for our own improvement and at the same time, share a general responsibility for all of humanity. Our particular duty to aid those to whom we think we can be most useful. How amazing is that? All of us just improve that little bit. We can make such a difference to the world and we can start that during Lent. So have a think, what could you do over Lent that just makes things better for other people? Because we always need to be a better us. How can we make ourselves a better us? One way could be, could you bring something in for our um, food hub? This is a, quite an old photo. This is one of the original photos that we had. If you saw it today, we've been over today and got some more um, provisions and it is unbelievable. It's amazing what other people will give. But maybe we need to do something and we need to get the message out that this facility is here. So could you tell one of your friends that's in need? I know. Why don't you go into school? They can give you something off the food hub. And they can go in and they can choose all the things that they need. It is so amazing. And it's an opportunity that our school can provide for other people. So let people know about it. But maybe if you give up your bar of chocolate once a week, maybe you could use the money from your chocolate to buy a tin to bring in to support other people. Something that might seem small actually makes a really, really big difference. So... Giving things up for Lent helps us to develop our character. And if you imagine, Lent is 40 days long. So if you give something up for 40 days. Or another thought, what about doing something extra every day for 40 days? If you did that and you stayed your whole school career with us, by the end of the seven years, that's 280 opportunities to do something nice for other people over the course of your school time. Now, there's a lot of people that don't just do one thing for people. They do lots and that all builds up. So my little thing at the bottom says, show someone you love them with acts of random kindness or arcs. And the arc is such an amazing thing. Because if you think of the arc, they went in two by two. And by working in pairs, we make things better. And that is something to really, really think about. Doing things for other people. You're doing it in twos. Okay, so here's a thought. Try to give something up this length that means something to you, something that takes effort because that helps to develop your resilience and determination and it shows you what you can do when you put your mind to it. Carry out some acts of random kindness or arcs. It might be something little, a smile, saying hello, holding a door for somebody, carrying things. But the important thing as well is to pray more. Ask God to help you do this. Don't try and do it on your own. Ask. And praying is an amazing opportunity to speak. So, Pope Francis said, make charity more of an encounter and less of a service. So make it an opportunity to encounter others, not feeling like you are overly doing something all the time, because it's important that you do it with love. Now, our prayer for Lent, Lord, help me to be the best me that I can be. Help me to make the most of Lent and the opportunities that it gives me. Amen. Nice, easy prayer. We're at Father Eddie to do our final blessing for us. May the God of all consolation order this season of Lent in his peace and grant you the gifts of his blessing, so that on our Lenten journey of prayer, fasting and almsgiving, we may be blessed with the gifts of hope, faith and charity, and so come happily and peacefully to the joys of Easter. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. 
Amen. Thanks, Father Eddie. So, as we move into Lent, let's really start to think how we can make a difference. Let's make a difference and be the best us that we can be. So, have a really, really lovely half term. Look after yourselves. Follow the guidelines. The more we follow those guidelines, the sooner we'll be back in school together, all learning and all getting back to normal. So, let us together make the sign of that cross that you can see on your screen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take care, guys, and I will see you all soon.